As a young girl, I always looked forward to school. I enjoyed learning new concepts and ideas to ponder on, the classroom being the perfect environment for me to challenge my scope of knowledge. School was like my second home, a place for me to feel welcome and accepted for who I was. This all changed on one ordinary day in the first grade when my classmate asked me why my skin was so dark. I had never looked at the color of my skin so critically until that day and suddenly felt embarrassed that my classmate could see my difference so clearly and that I had ignored it for so long. This is the first incident in which I remember feeling conscious about the way in which other people saw me instead of the way that I saw myself. Upon returning home, I began to scrub my skin, expecting its color to wash out like dirt on one's hands. With my failed attempts, I remember feeling frustrated as to why its color was the way it was. Having grown up, I now realize that my different and darker skin tone is something that I can take pride in and that I am just as much of a person as anyone else. But it was a journey for me to get here, which is what I hope to share with you today. I have always been curious. Ever since I learned to talk, I have always had questions, to which my parents unfortunately fell victim to. In the first grade, I was given the hardest question to answer. Why was I different? It was the first question which my parents could not answer for me, to my satisfaction. Immediately, I began looking for someone to blame, and I found it through science. My culprit was melanin, the single cause of racism. Melanin is a pigment naturally found in the human body, meant to absorb sunlight and protecting the skin and organs from high levels of UV rays. And through evolution, Individuals living in countries with higher levels of sunlight were being born with darker skin and more melanin. So I had found my answer, and I had found it through science. And for the next few years of my life, I would continue to turn towards science in order to balance my curiosity. It was during this time when I realized my interest for science was not limited to a science lab, but it was all around me. I was able to gain a deeper understanding of our world, and I was eager to share it with others. I was sure that they too could have the positive experience I had in STEM, and would become just as engaged as I was. Yet, my encouragements were met with much disapproval. Many of my classmates did not agree with my participation in science, especially the guys, who laughed it off while others told me I had no place in a subject like science. Part of me did agree, as science was seen as a dominantly male subject, and I did not want to be singled out as a disruptor of this normalcy. According to UNESCO, less than 30% of the world's researchers are women. But who defined what it meant to be normal, and what defines the others? I had never sought for anyone's approval in order to pursue what I wanted, so I thought, why would I do so now? I was in grade 7 when I competed in my first science fair, the Bay Area Science and Engineering Fair, known as BASEF. To my surprise, I was the only grade 7 competitor out of over 600 others from my elementary school, with a limited amount of girls in my project room. But, having a competitive spirit, I hoped to do well in the competition, but was more so looking to educate the judges about my passion. After seeing my interests being echoed through their eyes, I was no longer intimidated by the idea of a formal suit and tie judging, but instead saw it as a way to communicate my story. My presentation at BASEF paved the way to my success in winning a gold medal and a spot on Team BASEF to go to the National Science Fair, the Canada-wide science fair held in Regina, Saskatchewan. With the same concept in mind, I approached Canada-wide judging openly, and to my surprise, won a bronze medal for my efforts. So, I guess it was safe to say that the eight months I had spent in the lab, the long nights researching, 
and preparing my presentation for the judges, and the energy I had put into my project had all paid off. Or had it? Looking back at the fair, I do not just remember it for the medal hanging around my neck in the pictures, or for the ability for me to hold my head high when coming home. It was the people I met from all across the nation, the STEM-driven environment which I was immersed in for a full week, and the opportunity I had to learn from other students' projects that I remember the most. They did not see me as the colored girl in class, but instead they saw me for the work that I did and who I was. And it was this experience which led me back to BASEF in 2018, where I again competed at the national level to win another bronze medal, and in 2019 to represent Canada at the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair held in Phoenix, Arizona. Intel ISIF is like the Olympics of science fair, being every budding scientist's dream and goal, especially me. So by now, it was quite clear to me that science was a subject which I wanted to pursue. I also hoped to motivate young students to participate in the subject, especially girls from underrepresented races. Although I personally had never doubted my participation in fairs such as BASEF, I hadn't grown up seeing another marginalized woman in science. This left me without a relatable model to look up to, which had once made me doubt my ability to participate in a subject which belonged to all people, and not just one secluded group. In grade 9, I had the opportunity of joining my school board, the hamilton Wentworth District School Board, known as the HWDSP, in a committee council which focused on equity and inclusion planning for schools within the board. This council has been an amazing opportunity and emulates a sense of empowerment to look around the table and see the faces of strong individuals who have overcome the same obstacles that I have. As a co-chair, I am able to appreciate the platform it gives me to share my story with open ears and to those who are truly committed to making a difference. We all undergo various challenges throughout our lives. While there are some that can be interpreted, such as a physical limitation, most of the time we are rendered completely unaware. We are left blinded to these silent struggles which one could be dealing with. Our assumptions are an impulse which leads us to follow common stereotypes, or in plain words, having society define the kind of person you are, as well as limiting your future. Now, one of the biggest obstacles in my personal life have involved me being overlooked for opportunities which others would simply be handed. This often meant that because of the stereotypical lens which some people have, I often had to work twice as hard to gain respect and trust of others. But with science in my life, this was a completely different story. At eight years old, I was young and unaware of what others thought of me, my childish ignorance providing me with a blissed environment. Because I was immersed in science from such a young age, I was unable to see the barriers between girls and STEM in front of me. So in my perspective, they simply did not exist. Being a visual minority from a minority race, it would be quite the understatement if I told you I had never felt uncomfortable in my own skin. With time, I have had to learn the importance of educating others about my culture and my differences. Although my perspective might not always be accepted, I have a responsibility, like all other citizens of my generation, to not only listen, but learn from others. Now parents, don't get me wrong when I say this, but I truly believe it will be the youth from my generation who will tackle our current challenges head on. After all, we do encompass the future researchers, innovators, educators, and we will be in the positions of power to reflect the change that we wish to see in our world. Despite these challenges I had in my life, I had my family and my friends who supported me in my journey. There were many of my classmates who supported my engagement in science and appreciated that I was not born to fit into the mold. 
It was my generation who challenged me to become better than I was and helped leave our history of divisiveness where it should be, behind us. One of those groups of people for me personally has been Team Canada. Team Canada consisted of 18 students from all across the nation who represented Canada at the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair with their scientific research this past May. Just being a part of this amazing community of like-minded individuals acted as my support system. This International Science Fair hosted over 1,800 students from 80 countries and regions all across the world who gathered together to celebrate science as a community. Amongst these people, Team Canada truly showed me that science can transcend borders and that I am never alone on my journey. You are all here because you want to make a difference and you wish to hear the experiences and perspectives of others. If there is one thing I wish for you to take from this talk, it is to never let anyone place limits on what you can do. Find what interests you and take a risk. I promise you, it will be worth it. There will always be 100 reasons not for you to do something. But if you can find just one reason as motivation to pursue your passion, go for it. To the young people from minority races, you are so much more than just a face on a UN refugee agency ad. To the young girls watching me right now, you can be so much more than just a pretty face on a beauty magazine. Even if my words today can inspire one person to break free from the mold, my work here is done. So go ahead, erase those boundaries which society has tied you to. Forget the societal rules that we all must follow and reinstate the idea that we all belong. After all, rules are meant to be broken especially the ones which place limits on what you can do. So go ahead, erase those boundaries, be fearless, be dedicated. If you fall, get back up. And I promise you, once you become unbounded from these ideas, you will be unstoppable.